InDesign has, as is to be expected, a spell check feature that can be activated, and you'll do that via the edit menu, scroll down to spelling, and then choose check spelling. Without any fancy modifications, the default spell check feature can check the spelling in an entire document, the text within the frame you are currently working in, or in the selection of highlighted text you just made. You can also correct the spelling or ignore the flagged words from within the spell check, this check spelling dialog box. However, it can do so much more than that. One very specific example I want to share is that you can change the language setting for your spell check. If you're working in English, obviously you want to have U.S. English as your default li um, language. But maybe you're editing something for an English company and all of the words like favorite, F-A-V-O-U-R, right, um, are getting flagged for being spelled wrong, but they're not because you're using the, the Great Britain or the English version of the word. You can change the language. You can change it to Spanish, French, Greek, Italian. There are lots of default languages that are available. You can edit the language of your spell check via the preferences dialog box and we learned earlier that you can use command or control K to launch your preferences dialog box or you can choose the InDesign menu then preferences and then dictionary. If you're on a PC the preferences are found under the edit menu so you go to the edit menu scroll down choose preferences and then dictionary and from there under the dictionary settings you can change the language right at the top and you can see that I have English USA set as my default men, um, language. It's also possible to enable dynamic spell check, which is the little red squigglies that everybody wants to see usually. We've become accustomed to that under your words. Um, most people will miss typing and spell check errors in InDesign because they don't see the red squigglies, right? You see a red squiggly or a green squiggly or a blue squiggly under your word and you know something's not right and you know to at least address it or figure out what's not right. And you can activate those via the preferences dialog box as well. So while you're in the preferences dialog box under spelling, you can enable dynamic spelling. Then you can even modify it. You can change the color. If you don't want red, if you wanted purple, change it to be purple. We usually use red for spelling errors, so keep that in mind. There's also, while you're there, if you go down one more tab within the Preferences dialog box, there's an autocorrect feature. You can enable autocorrect if you want to, but I would be careful. We all know how well it works on our phones at inconvenient times, right? You're trying to type a word, and every time you type it, it autocorrects it to something else. Be careful, because a lot of the times when you're formatting text in InDesign, you're not formatting your own words. You're formatting somebody else's words. Somebody else wrote something, and you're formatting their article into a newsletter or you're formatting their book into uh, their chapters into a book so be cautious if you're going to enable autocorrect in InDesign. Although the spell check dialog box allows InDesign users to find misspelled words and change them it is not the same as the find change dialog box which can be launched via the edit menu as well and instead of choosing spelling choose find change. Find change features generally allow users to find a word or phrase and replace it with a new one. For example, if a character's name in a book is Mopey Maggie and we decide to change it to Dreary David, the find change feature in any text editing program will find all instances of Mopey Maggie and change them to be Dreary David. And this applies to all text editing programs. Microsoft Word has the same option. InDesign's Find Change dialog box does much more than this. It allows you to find and change any attribute of an object or text and replace it. For example, if you've added a drop shadow to all of your images and then decided you'd rather have an outer glow, the Find Change dialog box can be used to find all objects with drop shadows and change them to have outer glows. You can find everything that uses Times New Roman and change all instances of Times New Roman to be Century Gothic. You can find everything that's red that's a specific color red and change it to be a different specific color of blue. It has some really cool features. So you can see here this is what the find change dialog box looks like. We're going to focus on the first tab which is the, type, the text tab. Type a word or a phrase in the find what field and then choose a word or phrase to replace it with the change to field. This is the most basic way to use find and change. Type in Mopey Maggie and change to Dreary David. When you're ready, you'll hit find next. It will show you, it'll highlight it in the document and you can say yes, I wanna change that and hit change. If you're confident, you can say 
find next, and then change all, and it will change all instances of Mopey Maggie to be Dreary David. Going above and beyond that, if you use the second or the bottom portion of the dialog box, you can modify attributes. So if you're looking for a text attribute instead of a word or phrase, use the bottom half of the find change dialog box. Instead of searching for a word, you can search for a typeface, a type color, or a type setting, and then choose to replace it with a new typeface, type color, or type setting by clicking the little magnifying glass on the right hand side of the option. So you'll click the magnifying glass on the find what and say find all blue text, find all Times New Roman text, find all text that's italic and then you'll change to and you'll launch the dialog box and say change all italic text to be regular or all italic text to be bold. So you can see here that instead of using the find what and change to field to change words, I'm going to use the bottom half of the panel. I hit the magnifying glass to search. I went to character color. And now what I can do is I can choose a color that's in my document and I can search for it and change it to a new color. I could even choose span columns. Let's say that as I was designing my layout, I decided that every single article should have a title that spans two columns, whether the article was a one, two, or a three column layout. In a one column layout, it wouldn't span two columns because there's not two columns. But let's say that I have two column and three column articles and I decided that all headlines should only span two columns. I could search the document under span columns to find all instances of where I've used the span two columns option and change it to span all columns. You can then take it one step further. Instead of using the text option, you can switch to the object option. The Find Change dialog box can also be used to search for object attributes. Click on the object option at the top of the dialog box to focus your search on things like stroke weight, color and type, frame, corner options, fill colors, drop shadows, etc. And then use a little magnifying glass, just like we did for the text settings, to find an object format and then a change object format. And it works the same way, so you're going to hit the little magnifying glass, a dialog box will appear, find what you're looking for, it'll show you what you're using in your document, and then say whenever you find that red color or that drop shadow or that stroke pattern, change the wavy stroke to be a dotted stroke. And you'll do that via the change object format dialog box. You can see here that I've selected the find object format, I went to stroke and corner options, you can find all frames that are using a rounded corner and then go into the change object format dialog box which will look identical to this and say change it all to be an inverse rounded or an inset or a bevel corner and it will go through your entire document and it will reformat all your frames. This works really well if you're standardizing if you're making maybe a catalog and you're standardizing how all the photographs are inserted maybe you wanted them all to be rounded and you wanted them to have like a half inch round corner and then you thought that looks really weird. It's really too broad of a of a radius. And so you're like, instead of a half inch radius on the corners, I just want it to be uh, an eighth of an inch, 0 .2, 0 0.125. You could come in here and find everywhere you've used a half inch rounded corner and change it to be a one eighth inch rounded corner.